fourth one is progressive life change. Progressive life change. Does somebody define what that looks like as it's fleshed out. What is progressive life change? Let me walk you through it at first because I want to hear what you have to say. I've seen small groups meet before and they get together and they never grow in number. They're small groups, right? We're supposed to keep them small. They never grow in number. Um, they meet together all of the time. It seems like I've seen small groups who continue to have the same um, life issues and concerns for a long period of time. Um, I use this model to actually test the effectiveness of small groups. In the church where I served, we had adult small groups and student small groups. When we first start, started in 1996, we were on a mission trip in Kentucky, and I took about five students into the kitchen of this convention center where we were staying. And I said, guys, I've chosen you all because I've watched you lead your friends. We had a group of 27 people. Uh, that was, our, large, that was our, our youth group, was 27 people. I said, I've chosen you guys because when we go back on Sunday, we're going to start a small group ministry in our church. And the, st- and the small group ministry is going to be led by you. And every Monday night, the five of us are going to sit down at my house and we're going to talk through the lesson for the week. And then you and your small group are going to choose a night of the week where you're going to meet in your own homes. And you guys are going to become youth pastors to a small group of, you know, four to five people. And these were grade 9, 10, and 11 students that I had chosen to serve as small group leaders. And what happened is that we had five effective small group leaders, Hudson Spivey and Stephanie Taylor and Bryce Davis and Tara Nam, and uh, it seems like Rachel Buck was another one. And these guys all got the same amount of training, had the same material. I gave them every week on Monday night a, a worksheet like this with the lesson on it, and we would go through the lesson on Monday night, and all they had to do is redo what we did on Thursday nights or Wednesday nights whenever they chose to meet. And what happened was an amazing thing. All of them started meeting. All of them was regular. All of them were given the same amount of resources to do a good job. But it seemed like that Tara's group took off. And Tara's group, they doubled themselves in three weeks. They started with six. And by week three, they had 12 people coming. Finally, when Tara's group alone reached 26, we had to split her group into three. And we had born out of that three new leaders and then we had eight small groups. Does that work, my math? Well, yep, it works. And so we had eight small groups, right? And so what happened was Tara's group was just fire, and, and Tara's group began to show us progressive life change. All three of those groups had a service project once a month. You know, Bryce's group didn't do so well. And so we went in and we learned that there wasn't really a challenge for the people in Bryce's group to grow and to see their lives getting better. You know, if we as Christians say that we're supposed to be uh, respect authority, but everybody in our group never gets along with their parents. Th- that's a problem, right? I mean, I know that's an issue right now with you. Maybe I know it is with my own kids. And just how do we get along? And so there needs to be some growth in that. If Christ is really the Lord of our life, then we'll see growth in our life in every area. And so progressive life change is valuable. And I'm convinced that even on a weekend at Teens Conference, we can see people come in at this level and leave at this level in their faith. The last one is this. Quality biblical content. I've challenged you guys to take a Bible verse. Maybe make it your team's Bible verse for the weekend. Um, The the pastor, the speaker this weekend is going to be sharing with you from God's word. And I'm convinced that they'll share specific biblical things with you as they teach you. But in your group, I want to challenge you as you go to bed at night, maybe the next morning when you get up, you take your Bible and you try. I I was watching. Tell me your first name again. Jonathan. Jonathan, uh, a minute ago when he was trying to find the verse, Jonathan just whipped out his Bible and turned. It was in Ezekiel, wasn't it? Where, you don't remember where it was. He just went whoop like this. It was in Daniel. And he said, this will work. And he just read the verse right there. And truthfully, it came alive a little bit. There was something that he could take from that particular verse and apply it to the small group that he was in. And, you know, I'm not sure that that's exactly quality biblical content, doing it that way. But, you know, God's word is big and strong. And God's word is... It already tells us how to live. And so you can take some of these things. And I want to challenge you. Be sure that every time that your team gets together, that you either re-go, you go back over that verse or that you talk about something that you learned this morning in your, in your quiet time or something like that. Guys, everybody look this way. I am so proud. Of, I don't even know you. Uh, but I'm so proud of you. I want you to know that as I move about Ontario and Quebec, I've been given this large piece of landscape to be responsible for in in the eyes of the Baptist church. And as I move around the landscape, 
I am continually amazed at the strength of our students. You know, I go into some of these churches and some of the people in there just, I think I can say this, they just look dead already. You know what I mean? When you go into a church and they're, they just, you wonder why they're there. But then I go in and I find students like you who are alive in your faith, who challenge things um, that make you think and, and who are driving toward a relationship with Christ that's incomparable to those of the adults that you sit under at your churches. And I want to challenge you with that. I want to tell you that I'm proud of you. And, and setting aside this time in your life, I'm not really sure that it's going to build your resume when you go off to university. I think it'll help. I'm not sure that it's going to uh, grab you that best job in the future. I'm not sure that it's going to, to get you any fame at all the commitment that you've made to be here this weekend. But I want you to hear me say, as some outsider, some old, fat, bald guy that came up from North Carolina, that I am so proud of you. I, in my, I love seeing people who are committed to one another and who are committed to a cause and who are committed to see people your same age come to know Christ. And so I want you to know that, you know, I'm going to leave here today and I'm going to go back to my house and, and I'm just going to think on how proud I, proud I am of you and how you're going to serve people. And I'm convinced because of your commitment, Chris, that I believe one or two people may find themselves closely, more closely connected to Christ because of you and your investment in their life than they were before Teens Conference started. And so, man, I'm proud of you for doing that. And I know that it's going to happen already. I want us to commit this whole time in prayer. And I'd like to spend just a few minutes praying for you here at the end. But there on your sheets, you see that I've sort of included a prayer for you, that maybe you could pray every day that you're involved or in charge of a small group. And that prayer would just read this. Lord, I pray that each member of the team feel like they belong, like they contribute, and that they grow. Feel like they belong, contribute, and grow while they're under your leadership as a team leader. And I hope that if you pray that prayer, and I believe God will answer it, he'll allow people in your group to feel like they belong, to feel like they contribute. You know, if you pick out that loner, find a way for him or her to contribute. I'm telling you that they'll leave having grown from their experience. Hey, I want to pray with you, and then I'll give it back to Paula to sort of give us any final, um, any final things. Any comments or, or thoughts before we go to the Lord in prayer?